Namaste. It's important for my movement that you please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. What is your prognosis or what's your assessment of the NDA government in terms of managing the economy? Some of these problems are from the past, you know, they're baggage see, uh, from the past. Rajiv, first of all, what is happening in India is an mm. ideological fight. Mm. The left and left of center have dominated this country for years. And they won't now give up have easy. a formidable right. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And it is all led by Narendra Modi, who has united the Hindus. The, now, Nehru's policy and the Congress policy has been to break up the Hindu community into various castes, get the, you know, stampede the Muslims with fierce psychosis to say, Apre Moa Le Deluge, if I'm not there, you're gone because the pastor is sing, and try to get a coalition and stay in power. The JDU did that, that Mulayam Singh party did that, the everybody does that except the left. The left, you know, does something else. So, now, Modi has come and united everybody to say growth and development and give a new vision for India and has come to power. And they find that the longer he stays, the longer he does the right things, they're going to be out of power. So they're going after him, concocting things of, uh, you know, uh, uh, of intolerance, of nationality, of patriotism, all kind of stuff, right at the election time. If you notice all the things that come from Delhi, they're the election times. Uh, which always come create a controversy to poison the minds of people like they did in Gujarat now and lead it. So I think this ideological fight and they got their own uh, bed, fellow travelers in uh, right in Washington Post, New York Times yes, and yes. academic circles to write this yeah, thing. Yeah. One eminent uh, economist who was a chief economic advisor tweeted, oh after that uh, one, one person got killed, one, you know somebody got killed. Uh, somebody killed somebody, right? Some, you know, somebody killed a Muslim laborer there in Rajasthan. Oh, I'm so ashamed of my faith. This should not happen. What is happening? It's a crime for God's sake. Nobody knows what it is. The mm -hmm. crimes will happen for everyone. Yeah, yeah. They're all crimes. So, they, this is a fight. Now, as for the last four years are concerned, I believe the Modi government has done everything right for India's economy I agree and that. taken on deep vested interest. Yes. One, demonetization was fantastic because it changed the behavior of a class of people who were indulging in black money and were beyond redemption. Mm -hmm. It put the fear into them that government is going to go after and them, expose all of them. And it gave a boost to the digital money. It exp that, that is different. Yes. To, me, that's, to me, how do you change the behavior of people who are evading taxes, doing black money, doing all kind of activity? You got to hit them hard. Yes, mm -hmm. some people suffered. It is possible they suffered. Yes, but they now come back. But I think it's fantastic. Second, GST is fantastic because you're creating one single national market. Right. And you're getting all the data into single database. So you can find out who is there. Now, in Surat and other places, they went on a, on a fight, on a, on, a, on a strike for what? Because you know why? If you do, tell me, Rajiv, if you do one crore business, 5% you learn profits, 5%, 5 lakhs, you've got to pay income tax, man. Mm. They're not paying income tax. Mm. One crore, two crore, they don't pay income tax. Mm. You and I pay income tax on two and a half lakhs. All of us pay income tax. Why can't they pay income tax? Right. This country should protect honest taxpayers, not crooks, right. not tax evaders. Right. They were sought to be protected. People right. are fighting for them. And every media is writing, oh, the people are going, the informal, like what informal? Because rubbish. Everybody must pay taxes. Right. There's enough exemptions. GST was very good. Now we took on the crony capitalists. Mm. If you look at the list of top 10 people who borrowed money, one company has borrowed 40,000 crores of loans and the defaulting for power plants. Now, did they have 20,000 crores of equity? The banks who gave, did they, did, did they ask where the 20,000 crores of equity for a debt equity one is to two? They went on giving money because bribes are paid. There's a call from Delhi to the chairman. I know it. I've spoken to many chairmen. Many people have told me, consultants have come and said, I can get you money, you pay 2%, you do this. It's happened. Now, they're all being taken to the cleaners. The insolvency code is coming and this is all happening. All right. These, so these are good things. These Amazing. are good things, the major yes. reforms. Because India must reward honest taxpayers. India must reward honesty. We must drive away the black money. We must tell people we respect you as taxpayers. If you're tax evaders, we're going to go after you. Mm. Okay? Like America does. Mm. America put uh, Helmsley, Lisa Helmsley into prison at the age of 79 or something, right? right? right, right. The right thing to do. Because tax paying is a biggest crime they can do against a civilized society, not paying taxes. So we must do that. And then is putting money into roads, is putting money into infrastructure, is targeting, uh, targeting by DBT, by other. Other is great. If poverty is a lack of purchasing power, by other, if you can put money into people's bank and they yes. know what to do, it's fantastic. There's yes. no leakage. Yes. And putting, uh, uh, you know, uh, this thing, neem into urea. A lot of things have been done. It takes time for the results to come out. Yes. I hope the results come out. Yeah. But one thing is certain, there's no corruption in Delhi. 
At the UPAS, there was corruption. There's not a single scandal, no corruption. The ministers in Delhi, I'm told, are scared. You won't talk to businessmen because, you know, somebody is watching. And people are saying, power is centralized, power is this, but there's no corruption. There is corruption in the states. There is corruption in transactions. That has not gone away. But people must go to jail. We need the rule of law. We need reforms in education, reforms in the judicial system. So a lot of good things have happened to this country. And globally, the world respects us. Mm. I was in Japan. They're respecting Indians. Mm. They're saying the, you got a strong the first time after first decades, time, yes. they're respecting Indians. Yes. Pakistan. Whenever Pakistan used to uh, shoot across the border, I was told that people are not told not to shoot back to conserve ammunition. Now the thing is, they give, <laughs> shoot you once, you shoot them ten times. Right. Because the only way to tackle a bully is to hit him back. Yeah, These yeah. are bullies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know they, where they come from and what so, they do. I think that Modi or Modi style governance we need for 20 years. At least. We need for 20 years to counter the last 70 years of what the Nehruvians did. And this is not something that will finish, uh, the job is not finished in one term of five years. So I'm very happy that this is going on. It's not perfect, but I think it's so much better than the past and we need several terms of Modi. So yeah, I, but I think there are some, some things, there must, be, there must be open communication, more data being put out. And more but competent ministers. More competent, uh, some of the ministers are very good. Very good, yeah. But I think, uh, you know, more has to be done. And the IAS uh, people are still <laughs> controlling too much. The yeah. bureaucrats are controlling far too much. Yes, because we need more freedom, mm. more red tape should be cut, more mm. things have to be done. Well, I get this is an ongoing thing, but whatever happened in the last four years, I think is fantastic, is great. Yeah. The impact is being seen and I think the future is much brighter than what has been because the structural issues of the Indian economy are now being tackled. Mm. Now, the biggest challenge is, uh, which people are not understanding, there's no debate, 45% of India is dependent upon 17% of the economy, which is agriculture, mm. uh, growing at 3%. Mm -hmm. So, 55% of India is dependent upon 83% of the economy, which is services and industry, which is growing at 9%. Mm -hmm. So, income divergence between these sectors is very large. Mm -hmm. And that is what is creating social tension. Mm -hmm. So, we have to move 15, 20, 30% of population from the land yes. into factories, into services. Right. And that can come by urbanization, that can come by better infrastructure, that can come by low cost manufacturing, that can come by wage good manufacturing and many things else. Okay, that has to happen and, it, and that is what is creating political tension. For example, Gujarat, 57% urban, urban uh, voters voted for Modi. In Saurashtra, in the rural area where 73% are rural, you know, there was agrarian distress because there can't be solutions. What mm. can you do? Mm. Whatever money you pour in, there will be no solution. Mm. Whatever money you pour in. Mm. Okay, money has been poured in the rural sector. Yes. You can look at the budget, you can look at everything. But outcome is poor. Why? The land cannot sustain so many people. Mm. It can never happen. Mm. In the south, there is not so, so much of distress is not there in the south. Mm. Because land cannot sustain, there should be other occupations. So we have to invest in infrastructure, we have to move people out, and we have to go through this political mai mai tu tu for some more time till the narrative changes. So I would think the solution for India is rapid urbanization of smaller towns. Mm. India has got 5,000 small towns, you must invest in them, give a good quality of life, so more and more people aggregate, they get better jobs. Huge infrastructure. Huge needed. infrastructure and the small town infrastructure create a fantastic network of roads, link people to markets, make the railways very efficient so large number of people can be moved and all the things should come. Five years is too short. We are all proud of India's accomplishments in technology. But is India becoming a digital colony? That's the question discussed in the next segment with Mohandas Pai.